Hello and welcome to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationers. So today I've been out collecting resources, been doing a bit of mining and I'm going having to stray further and further away from base to find the resources. That means I get lost a lot. So today I'm going to build a lighthouse up on the biggest hill over there so I can find my way home. Now I don't particularly want to have to run a power cable all the way up here so we're going to build uh, some basic solar setup here with a couple of lights on it. Now solar setups have been probably done to death in tutorials but some of them are outdated, some of them are just plain wrong. So we'll do some, we'll do, do one here today. We'll explain not just what to do but why we do it and we'll put a few twists on it to, using some of the newer parts. Okay, so first up we need some solar panels. There we have them. Now I've just used the single output ones that have both the power and data on the same port purely for the reason of just saving cables. Okay, so we'll also need a way of storing power because we want to run the lighthouse all night. For that I'll use an APC. That has enough power in it just with a large battery to, to store enough power to keep it going all night. And I'll put up a couple of lights. Now I've painted my lights green just so as I can tell them from the stars when I'm a long way away. There's no green stars, so if I see a green light on the distance, I know that's my lighthouse. So that's basically it for our infrastructure there, just a matter of wiring it up. Now I'm going to use different coloured cables to denote different circuits in what I'm doing. It just makes things a bit easier to read. So, wire them up. And there we go, all wired up. So I pop the battery in, switch them on, lights are running. We're all good. Now I've used a green cable to denote the supply side of the power, just to let me know that it is not a constant source of power, so I should be careful before tapping anything into it. And the red cables, I just use my general power lines. I can use them anywhere throughout the base and I should be pretty safe. Now, if we want the solar panels to actually track the sun, we're going to need some logic circuits. Now, sadly, this is probably the fir first ones you're going to probably want to build yourself, but it is also one of the harder ones to do. Now, the reason for that one is that the solar panels and our daylight sensor, are, well, they, they speak different languages, so we've got to use a bit of maths there to force them to speak the same language. So to get the solar panels to do what we want, we also have to get the solar sensor to cooperate with the solar panels. Now what the solar panels want is a value from 0 to 100 degrees, 100 percent. So 0 is when it faces directly to one side, 100 percent is when it faces directly to the other side. So we want 0 to be basically pointing straight at sunrise. So now the solar sensor will measure 0 straight out of the face of it. So if we put it down where it faces sunrise, we should be pretty right. So zero is now pointing towards where the sun will rise. So its zero value will now be facing sunrise where we want these ones to be facing. So the next part is that this will give a value between zero and 180 on the, on the sunset. We want to go to zero to 100. So basically divided by 1.8. If you take a look at your logic chips, you'll see that they have an input and an output for the data and a power at the top. They generally all hit a similar sort of thing. Sometimes they have three data ports, sometimes they have two, but they all have a single power and some inputs and outputs. You find they're just about all set to read inputs on the left and outputs on the right. So when you construct your circuit in a logical way, it will logically read from left to right if you construct your circuit that way. So first thing we want to do is read our sensor. So we'll put our logic reader in with the sensor to the left and then we can make that cable connection as the only connection going between those two items. So now once we've read the solar angle we needed to divide it by 180. That's how the plan went. So for that we shall need a math unit. As you can see the math unit still has the power at the top, inputs at either side and an output at the bottom. So reading logically from left to right, next one goes in. We shall need a way to store the 1.8, so we'll put down a memory. 
that once again with our cables directly in single connection between each one and the answer will come out the bottom which if we want to be neat neat about it all we just keep going from left to right we will need, now need to write that value back into the solar panels because we've got more than one there one item to write it to we shall use the batch writer the batch writer can write it back into the power cable so there we've got the data and power on the same we can just hook that straight back into there and done now we just need to get power to them all and there we go power hooked up now I've just used a yellow power cable for this one here just to let me know that this is an important system and if I want to mess with that I really should know what I'm doing now as we've got these ones simply hooked up selecting the right items here is fairly simple because the daylight sensor is the only thing attached so it's the only thing I get to choose from there so I want to collect it to read the daylight sensor and read the solar angle switch him on she's right on the horizon Okay, the math we want to choose the logic reader it's the only thing attached and the logic memory now we want to set the logic memory to 1.8 because we're dividing a number from one between 0 and 180 we want an angle number between 0 and 100 so divide by 1.8 and we'll be there and we are going to divide the logic memory logic reader switch on so 5 goes to 2.9 looks about right so batch writer reading in from the logic math it's the only one connected our output is the solar panels we are reading the vertical switch him on and there we go we just have to switch them around so they're facing the right direction and there we go our solar panels are now tracking the sun if we look at it there we've got 79 percent efficiency they're generating 358 watts each we've got the the, the uh, power hooked into the solar side of the battery this means that at night time this circuit will go dead and all this will shut off and consume no power so that's the good part of it the bad part of it is is at night time the solar panels will be facing the other way so in the morning they'll be pointing the wrong way and there'll be nothing there to turn them around but thanks to some updates in the game we have a way around that so if you remember we start the game now with a basic solar panel now you've probably thrown that away the first chance you got when you got the better solar panels but let's drag that out and we shall put it on the wall facing sunrise now in the morning first thing that the sun hits will be that solar panel it will provide enough power to power up this circuit and then this circuit will then turn the other solar panels around the face face the sun now we've got to use a transformer here because this will force the power to power these circuits before it starts to charge the battery without this the battery will consume the power and this circuit will not switch on so that's it our basic solar tracking done uh, there are other ways to do it but you know you have to be a bit of a nerd to do that so anyway Oh, of course I've got to do it don't be silly that hurts my OCD I've got to do something better than that right so the issue here is that while the, the light sensor returns an angle of 0 to 180 from horizon to horizon the solar panels do not tilt all the way to 0 and 180 they will only tilt down to 15 degrees so to get the optimal out of those ones there you don't want them to move until the sun reaches 15 degrees then you want it to track the sun through the next 150 degrees till it gets to 165 degrees and then they should stop okay so the first thing we've got to do is now we've still got to read the solar angle but we now want it to return a zero angle when it reaches 15 degrees so we can simply do that just by subtracting 15 degrees we're just using a math unit 
with the memory set to 15. So we're reading the angle, we're taking the logic reader and the memory and subtracting, which is working. 97, no, it's 15, 82. Right, so now we want to track it. So for between 15 and 165, we wanted to return that number at between one between zero and 100. So as before, we're just going to divide by 150 or by 1.5. Right, so we just add another math unit. We set it to 1.5. And from the logic math, logic memory, and we're dividing. Right, yeah, so there we go. So we've got our number between 1 and 100, but it'll go, the, the sun will go over to 180 degrees. This only goes to 165. So once it gets right to the horizon, it's going to return a number which is greater than 100 and cause the solar panels to wig out. So we're going to need another math process to limit that to 100. For that, we'll use another logic processor, but we'll use a min max unit this time. So we had a min max unit and a memory. Our memory we set to 100 because that's the maximum number we want it to return. So we'll have the input of whatever angle that our current calculation is giving, and our output will be the our other other input will be the logic memory, and we shall return the lesser of the two. So switch it on. Now it's returning 81, which is the values coming of our logic math. Once that exceeds 100 the lesser value will be the logic memory. So it'll return the maximum of 100. So once it reaches all the, once it reaches a value greater than 100, it won't cause the solar panels to wig out. Now that we've got that value, of course, as before, we still gotta use our batch writer to write it back to the solar panels. And there we go, squeezed in right on the end there. It fits nicely. Uh, sort of read the output of there. To the solar panels, it'll be the vertical. Switch it on, and off they go. Now, if we look at them, you should find that they are now returning 422 watts, as opposed to the 370, I think it was before. So we've got a marked, marked improvement in the solar efficiency that we get from those ones. Now, once they, once the sun reaches 165 degrees. These ones should just sit there and not move any further. Now one of the cards you get for your tablet is your network analyzer. It can tell you a bit about the, the networks you've got there. So this cable network running the two lights is using up 100 watts of power. So we'll, we'll need that to run day and night. So during the day we're going to have to generate 200 watts of power to keep that going through the night. On our other one there, we're consuming 95 watts of power on our control circuit. So that one shuts down at night. So we only need to generate the 95 watts during the day. So to keep that running all the time, we need to generate 295 watts from the solar panel. And of course, as we're looking at it there, we're getting 438 from that one there. So we could have powered this whole thing off a single solar panel. And there you have it. That is my take on single axis solar tracking. So done the same simple way, done the slightly less simple way. We always have our fail safe there to make sure it resets itself no matter what happens during the night. Now as the sun sets, I can go get slightly less lost. Now I've got my lighthouse to navigate by. But as we say, just taking the time to lay out your circuits a bit bit more neatly, just makes them a lot easier to read. It helps with your thought process and helps you figure out what you're doing. And well, until next time, happy building. See ya.